Stephen Key is the co-founder of Eventrite, a company that helps inventors from over 65 companies pursue their dreams of turning their idea into reality. He is also the co-founder of Inventors Group of America, whose members are a collection of leaders in inventing worldwide. He started a free high school program called Invent Yes, which helps students learn how to license their creations. He is well recognized as a leader in product licensing and intellectual property strategy. He's published thousands of articles, has appeared in Time, Fast Company, New York Times, and more. He has five books and the list goes on. His receipts are many, but most importantly, he has over 20 patents in his name, dozens of concepts he has retailed in Walmart, 7-Eleven, and Disney. Plus, he has been endorsed by Michael Jordan, Alex Trebek, and Taylor Swift. Please welcome Stephen Key. <laughs> well, thank you very much. What a weird uh, lineup. Taylor Swift. Michael Jordan, Alex Trebek, but somehow it all works. And maybe I can talk about that a little bit later, but thank you so much for that. Interview. Oh, you're welcome. So dreams, ideas, creativity, and innovation are the keywords to describing inventing. When did you start and what was it that you invented? Wow. If we go back a few years, I wasn't quite sure anybody would hire me. So I thought, well, I'll just create my own job. And I just started making things, not really knowing where it would go. But I knew by creating things with my hands, something magical was happening. First of all, I was loving it. And the things that I made, people led them to. So I was hooked. Did I call myself an inventor? I don't think so. That That's such a big word, right? I mean, was I a product artist or product developer or just someone that was creative? Yes. So that's how it all started. And my ideas at the very beginning were just silly ideas. They, they were just fun ideas. So they weren't really inventions until a little bit later when I had read an article how there was never enough information on labels and I had licensed or rented an idea to a company that was selling my cups and canteens at all the Disney stores around the world. And that's when I said, well, wow, if I had this creative cup that, that delivered more information, maybe I could put that on a label that would deliver more information. So my first invention was a rotating label that added 75% more space that people need for larger print, for drug facts, for all sorts of things. And that was really my true, true invention because it was new and it was novel and hadn't really been, no one had brought something like that to market. Uh, so. How many attempts did you have to make before this product landed? <laughs> it was painful. It was very, very painful. I have to tell everybody, you better love it or do something else. You don't. At the very beginning, when you create something, you're not quite sure if it's going to be manufactured or anybody would really want it. I make things that I want. And maybe other people might want them too. So yes, I made lots of prototypes and variations and they were awful until every once in a while something magical would happen and I would figure it out. And then it's like, wow, maybe somebody would want this too. Yeah. Only a small percentage of inventions succeed and only about 10% get patented. Mm. Still, it's an enormous market. So what is it about inventing that makes it so popular? That's such a great question. I think that everybody has had an idea. I think they struggle with what do I do with it, right? And so... I, I think everyone has had an idea. And, and if you don't do anything about it, sooner or later, you just might see it on TV or on the store shelf. And that's that's very disappointing. So I think we all have ideas. Now, do those ideas have to be inventions to be licensed or commercialized? No, not necessarily. In fact, most ideas that are on the market don't have patents on them. Right. So 
So yes, a lot of people file patents. There's a lot of patents that never go anywhere. I like to tell everybody, I'm not so worried about the patent part of it. I'm worried about, do I have an idea that someone wants? To me, it's it's actually more important, in my opinion. Yes. What are some of the, the barriers to putting out an invention? Or I inventing think the, in general? <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest barrier is that it sounds difficult when you hear the word intellectual property. Like, what the heck is that? Why did they name it that? I don't, I can't even relate to that word. What do you mean intellectual property? It's really your creativity and yeah. you can protect your creativity with all these different tools. So I think the problem most people have is what do I do next? And do I rush out and do I file a patent? Because I think I need one. I've heard my friends tell me I need one. I'm watching Shark Tank. They're telling me I need one. And I'm here to tell everybody, take a deep breath and, and, and learn a little bit about the process. And there's a lot of information out there that people are willing to share with you. So I think the biggest problem is people are rushing and they're fearful when you don't have to be. It's really not a prototype problem or a patent problem. It's a knowledge problem. And that's what I'm trying to do is help with that. Or they all want to go on Shark Tank. <laughs> well, yeah, I try to tell everybody, look, Shark Tank, it's a wonderful show, but it's a TV show. <laughs> I, it's not real, kind of. Right. But there's drama and everybody likes it. And But I do yeah. think it's helped. it's helped educate people that, hey, what a wild thing to do to have a business. What a great thing to do to come up with an idea. So I, I like it. I just think that people need to realize mm. some of it is not reality. Yeah. How important is it to have an IP strategist? Because it is a complicated process. Well, you're right. I would say most of the ideas that are consumer products that you see down at a Walmart or, or Target, I don't think patents are that important. But when you have a big idea, that's going to take a lot of time and effort and money. Yes, you need intellectual property. And you're probably going to need more than one patent. You're probably going to need a wall of patents and really have a strategy of how to protect not only the invention, but the innovation to keep people kind of out of your business and have a long-term strategy to navigate similar products that are out there and maybe stopping some other people that might want to compete with you and how to navigate that world of intellectual property. So yes, it does take someone to help you with the strategy part, I think. Yeah, because the idea, people can have 10 people lined up and give them the same idea and they'll come up with 10 different products. But it's that physical formation of that idea that can be stolen if you don't protect it. <laughs> Yeah, I have a hard time with the word stolen or 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 infringed upon or copied or knocked off because I think Borrowed. <laughs> Yeah, I I think if you have a an idea that people want, it will be copied. Right. And regardless of what you do. And mm. and even Apple, which is an amazing company, cannot protect their iPhone. So it That's sounds like, well, gee, Steve, that sounds terrible. When it's really not, you have to realize that there's a great opportunity for, for people to come up with ideas. There's a great opportunity. The appetite for new, new, new is, is, is huge. It's always going to be big. But navigate it correctly so you can grab that market share. They might be able to copy your product, but they cannot steal or copy your brand. Mm. And yeah. so once you realize that, then it's all about customer service. It's all about business rather than trying to stop people that copy that are copying you yeah and that's a good point because it is kind of a form of flattery too <laughs> if <Yeah>. somebody, <laughs> somebody yeah. likes your idea so much they got to do their own version <laughs> well they they like the sales of it is what they yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's true <laughs> i always tell everybody if your idea has been copied congratulations <laughs> <laughs> you created something people want. Now, how do you navigate those waters, which is a little bit different, yeah. 
I imagine the process to bring things to market is different in other countries. So how does a person manage to do that, bring it to market if they're sitting in, say, Lexington, Nebraska? That's a great question because today, it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how how much money you have. If you learn about product licensing, that's kind of my specialty where I'm going to take an idea, show it to a company that's already in business, and they're going to do all the manufacturing, all the marketing, all the fulfillment, all the sales. They're going to do everything for me, and they're going to bring it to market very quickly, and they're going to pay me a royalty on each and every one they sell. It's called product licensing. I call it basically renting your idea to a company. Knowing that business model doesn't take a lot of money. So there's no barriers anymore. So you could live in Cairo. You could live in South Africa. You could live in Nebraska. It doesn't matter. You could be 13 to 80 years old. It does not matter. If you understand and find the companies that embrace this world word called open innovation, meaning they're going to open their walls for, for us to send them ideas and send them good ideas. And if they take it, they're going to bring it to market for me. So I think anybody in the world can do this now. Yeah. So uh, if you're part of a team responsible for launching a new sustainable packaging innovation, what is Fishbone? <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you asked that. I started out in the novelty gift industry doing fun things. And I went over in the toy industry. And then eventually I landed in the packaging industry, which is not very sexy and it's not very fun, really. It's just packaging. But I love it because it's, it, those are consumables, meaning if you have a packaging innovation someone takes, there's a good chance you're going to sell a lot of them. People are going to use it every single day. Okay. Fishbone is a new packaging innovation, and I'm part of a team. And this packaging innovation eliminates the plastic rings that hold beverages together. Those terrible plastic rings that are terrible for the environment, those certain situations which you just don't want the plastic out. So Fishbone is a new innovation, eliminates the plastic rings, gives you good billboard to show your product. And it's 100% curbside recyclable, which is great, good for the environment. So it's just one of those really amazing ideas that I'm involved in. So I'm very happy to be with that team. Yeah. And tell us about the high school program. Well, that I'm very proud of. And we have quite a few kids in that program. In fact, I teach a lot of classes the high school kids not only here in the united states but in other parts of the world as well i think that we need to start giving this next generation the tools to knock on doors of opportunity and the old business model was i'm going to start a business raise money you know do all the work it's pretty impossible for a young entrepreneur but product licensing they can do and product licensing, they're going to learn how to study the marketplace, protect an idea, knock on the door. They're going to learn about all the different things that gives each individual, I think, part of self-esteem. It gives them knowledge. It gives them power. It gives them the ability to say, hey, I can make a difference. So I'm very involved in helping the next generation learn about product licensing. So I teach a lot of classes. And we have a program called Invent Yes, that's absolutely free for kids to get involved in. And I love when I get this email from, a, last night I got an email from a 14 year old that says, hey, I'm in your program, I need help. And I said, absolutely, I'll help you. Mm. Because I think, I think having some guidance, I surely had it when I was younger. It's very important to have someone that's been there, that's done that, that can give you kind of that mentorship that you need to, to do things that are maybe out of the ordinary or do things that are out of your comfort zone or do things that you didn't think you could do. Because once you realize you can do certain things, the world changes. Mm. And I want to be part of that change. 
What are the key factors one needs to have a successful product? Someone asked me that today and they think it's the product. I think it's the person because it takes a person that has persistence, has determination, has some discipline, understands what companies are looking for, and it's willing to work with companies that need ideas. And companies have the opportunity to look at a lot of ideas. So why do they pick one or the other? They pick the person, right? They pick the person that's going to be workable, a person that's going to be an asset, the person that has that's enthusiastic, that has more ideas. They pick the person. So I think that's the thing that determines if a product's going to be licensed or not. Be knowledgeable, be passionate, be be that person that they want to be around. Yeah. And follow through. <laughs> yes. And getting the idea and, and getting it in physical form is one step, but there's manufacturing, business sense, marketing, and human resources. And if it oh. really takes off, then you've a good problem on your hand, but it's also a complicated one, which I'm sure well, you <gasps> I know what you just had mentioned was that traditional that I'm going to start a business. And that is hard for anybody. Right? That's hard even for people that are seasoned, especially people a little bit younger, or maybe someone's got a full-time job. Or maybe they don't have the experience. So the product licensing part, where you're going to rent that idea to a company that's already doing all those things. The only thing they don't have is that idea. So they do all the heavy lifting for you while they, they do the selling and manufacturing while you collect the royalties. That business model is really great for creative people like myself that doesn't really want to have employees, that really doesn't like business. I just want to be creative. So I think it's a perfect partnership. And that's why it's an amazing opportunity for people anywhere in the world to learn about product licensing because there's no barriers anymore. What are some of your favorite inventions that you've seen from some of your clients? Well, you know, this is funny. Let me talk about this one 13-year-old boy for a minute. And I'm going to talk about how silly it gets because I think you have to start there. This 13-year-old boy that's in our program, Invent Yes, likes to read and he likes to be just a young kid, a young boy. So he came up with a bookmark that's a whoopee cushion. <laughs> so... I know. So it's such a 13 year old boy, right? So you put the bookmark, you close the book and the book farts. Now that's a really fun idea for a 13 year old. It's not serious, but he was able to license it to a company that now sells and Walmart and Kohl's and Barnes and Noble and Amazon. He's now he's 15 collecting royalties on such a simple idea, but what happened he learned about business. He learned about working with companies, how to pitch it, how to protect it. He learned all those things. Now he's doing other ideas that just get bigger and better. So it started just with fun, but now he's going into other areas and using that creativity. So <laughs> that's, that's one awesome of my favorites. It's one of my favorites because it's like, <laughs> well, Steve, that's silly. Well, yes, and it can be fun and it can be silly too. So, but I get to see some amazing ideas. Someone I work with in another program created glasses that help people that are colorblind. Mm. That's a life-changing invention. Now, he's not part of my program, but he's an associate of me with another program. But So I get to experience a wide range of creativity, inventiveness. Mm -hmm. There's the word. There's the word. So I like to take it out of like, well, inventor, but how about just being creative, being inventive? So yeah. everybody can play now. I love that. So what are some of the trends in this industry? I imagine one of them is sustainability. Oh. Well, that's the industry I'm in. And that is a real big push. There probably is not a company that does not have a department 
that's concerned about that from Coca-Cola to Walgreens to Walmart to you name it. They all have a department now of dealing with, let's see if we can reduce some of this plastic, right? So that's a big trend. I would also say the pet industry is mm -hmm. a wonderful industry. Everybody loves pets and that industry has been growing for years. And you're going to see a lot of new innovations in that industry. I would also think that the toy industry is on fire. All the big companies have even opened their doors even more. I mean, the largest, one of the largest toy companies, Hasbro, has opened up their portal to see ideas from all, almost all around the world. But they're really looking for people that aren't toy inventors. They're looking for everyday people to give them ideas. 60% of all the products that Hasbro sells came from the outside. Wow. So those products were licensed. So the kitchen industry is another industry that's extremely inventor friendly. DRTV, as seen on TV, there's tons of them. What company doesn't want to see a new idea? Mm. Yeah. Exactly. And creativity has no bounds. So everything we see in our space started with an idea. So what message would you leave for those who are not sure whether or not they should pursue their discovery further? I'm really glad you asked that question because I think a lot of us are fearful of, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't trust myself. Okay. Can I really do this? I would like everybody to learn a little bit more about product licensing because you're going to learn to test ideas without spending a lot of time and money on any one idea. And once you learn how to test an idea to see if people want it, your ideas will just get better. You won't have any barriers in front of you. You won't overthink it. That means you will be able to participate faster. And because a lot of times we kind of hesitate because there's barriers or maybe I don't know, maybe I'm worried. But if you understand product licensing, you can jump in and play and see what happens. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Stephen. This is great. Well, thank you so much for having me.